All right, so for those of you who have watched any of John's Gee instructionals, he always talks about how the Gee is just a force multiplier, okay? And one of the greatest examples of this is when you're passing top half guard. Normally when you're passing top half guard, when you're working without a jacket, without a gi, it's always usually in your best interest to keep your hands locked because you have a reinforced wedge, you have a full circle closed around your partner's head and arm, and that gives you a greater amount of stability, uh, a stability and the grip is very robust. When you're working with a gi, you have access to the far side lapel, which means you can feed the far side lapel underneath your partner's, uh, partner's armpit, you can get to the far side lapel, and then you can have a cross face, which is just as strong as having your hands locked, but it gives you the luxury of having one free hand to work with, one free hand to post in your partner's knee, one free hand to do whatever you want with. So you have the same the grip, which is just as robust as having your hands locked no gi, but you have control over your partner's far side gi, and now you have a free hand to work with. Okay, so this is something that a lot of you have probably seen from here, but nonetheless, it's super, super important. So from here, we go in and we lock ourselves into this initial half guard. Now, once we lock into this initial half guard, we have to start unlocking the hands to set the grip. Now, if I just posture up from here and I start trying to pull my partner's jacket out, she just gives a bridge, everything comes inside, and you lose position, okay? So how can we go from the initial lock of the hands to a far side lapel feet? Right from here, I open up my right elbow, and from here I start swishing my legs where I drop my left hip, not to the floor, but I just drop my left hip. If I swish my legs out into this position, then at any point, even if she gets the hand inside, and she gives a strong bridge, she bridges into my base support because my legs now are perpendicular to my partner's body. If I'm parallel and she gives a strong bridge, I have no base support with my feet, I get taken over. So I go from relatively square hips to relatively angled hips and feet. And now I lift my partner's upper body with my right hand, and I get to a scapula grip with my left hand. And from here, we just retract the left elbow, we put a strong cross face in place, and we point our partner's face away from us. So that now when she goes to give a strong bridge, she's looking over the wrong shoulder, she bridges into my base support, and she starts to get, she starts to run to some issues from here. Now the last step from here, to true stability, is I take my head, and I bring it not up by my partner's shoulder line, but down towards my partner's midsection. And we walk into this position here. Now when she has to bridge, there's just no ability for her to bridge. So it's a three-tiered process. One, I swish her my feet and I angle my legs. Two, here. Two, we lift with the right hand and we switch to a scapula grip. From here, we pull the elbow back and we point our partner's head away. And three, we take our head down to the floor over our partner's midsection. When she goes to move me around from here, it's just not going to happen. And now you have all the time in the world to take your partner's far side lapel out and feed it underneath your partner's arm like so. Once I feed it underneath my partner's arm, we catch it, palm down, and we just feed it like so. Now, once we have it set, we turn the palm up, and that puts tension running through the jacket and running through the cross face. Now from here, when she goes to move, it's just not going to happen. And now I have the luxury of that closed circle around my partner's upper body at the head and shoulders because I have access to the jacket. This gives me the ro same robustness of gripping as I would have if my hands are locked, but now I have the luxury of working with a free hand to start passing my partner's guard. Okay. We go into that three that three tiered process to go from locked hands to far side lapel feet. One, angling of the hips and a swisher of the legs. Two, putting a scapula grip in and putting a tight cross face in place. And three, taking the head and walking it down below the shoulder line to the floor. When she goes to move, good luck. Now I make the feed. Once I make that feed, we pass it. Then we reach in the scapula grip, and we feed it in nice and deep from here. Now I want to put tension running through the D and running through my partner's cross, or through my cross face. So I take my palm and I rotate it 
up towards the ceiling, which will tell you there's a drastic pressure increase right from here. And now I put my head back on the floor. When she goes to move, there's just nothing she can do from here. And now we can start to work with that free hand. We'll start going in and passing up harder, stuffing legs, freeing our knee, freeing our foot, and passing from mount, quarter side.